Bev's Video Kingdom is intended for a mature audience. Listener discretion is advised. guys here we are draft time baby let's go let's go uh, if you keep clicking your tongue like that, i'm going home so while we were watching the movie last night uh, nate's nate's wife got home and she came by and just said hi to us and stuff and said hey court tonight just randomly at some point when you wake up or something could you just just get by nate's ear and just go and just see how he reacts for those of you that don't know that's one of the uh, scary bits that happens in the movie hereditary which we covered on tuesday and which we're all still reeling from <laughs> yep 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 we're we're sitting a lot closer tonight than we probably should be just because we're a little nervous yeah, we're, we're all sitting we're on the same on the side, same of the side table. Of the table. <laughs> what was funny i text i text all these guys after they watch the movie with me and i've i i watch scary movies all the time movies that i think are scary i rewatch scary movies all the time and i always watch them by them myself because my wife won't watch them with me i can't watch them with my kids and so I always watch these movies by myself, which I think lends itself to me thinking that they're so scary. And I told these guys, I was like, you guys are the best friends ever. Like, you guys freaking watch my scary movie with me. And I said, although it's definitely not as scary watching it with you guys, for sure. <laughs> That's the idea. Well, it was fun. I had a, I had a hell of a I had, time. Yeah, I had a good time. Brad is like the perfect, like, uh, like subtle movie heckler. <laughs> To sit next to you during a scary movie, um, I think Nick talked about it on the last pod. See, but that's the I thing. Won't is like, watch I watch a scary I, movie any other way, Brad. Well, I'm right. saying, I, I, I would do that. Like, like, like we we said earlier on Tuesday, we were talking about like like Zodiac versus this. And like, like I said, how Zodiac affects me more. It's like I wouldn't necessarily do that during Zodiac. Like, I don't want to make fun of like if it feels like very realistic and stuff. But you're talking about somebody that really died. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to throw those same jokes. But if it's I, like, I'd, I'd probably make fun of it. If it's a fictional movie, like fuck yeah, let's go. Let's let's. let's so like, you wouldn't make out. the EpiPen. Uh, uh, joke in My Girl? <laughs> no, he did. He had a My Girl shout out in his commercial, if you remember from last week's episode. Oh, boy. Yeah, I know. That's the, uh, my, that's right. My boy Macaulay. <laughs> getting the bees. <laughs> Not the bees. I think my throat's getting big. <laughs> uh. All right. So today we are, ga- we are gathered here today <laughs> to uh, celebrate the life of... Uh... Hail Paimon. <laughs> <laughs> Go watch the movie Hereditary if you haven't watched it already. But in a slightly lighter mood, we are going to be drafting in honor of Tony Collette's Oscar snubbed uh, performance as the matriarch of the of the family in the movie Hereditary. We are going to go with. <laughs> Oh, there's some scary movie going on. Just, just stop, stop it. it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's eyes just got so big and looked right at me. He thought I was doing it somehow. So every time Nick's back, I just got to do that. That's got to be a button, dude. <laughs> that's got to be a button. I feel the tension rising in the room right now. Uh, so Tension in my sphincter. <laughs> In honor of Nick's tight sphincter, we are going with tightest buttholes in a movie. Are you ready, Nick? <laughs> I no. got a lot of green. We're uh, gonna go with my list. We're gonna go with also true. We're gonna go with uh, <laughs> we got a lot of green. <laughs> I did a lot of research. <laughs> we're gonna go with most memorable keyword memorable. Doesn't have to be a good mom, doesn't have to be a bad mom, most memorable mother in a film. Now there was some question about step parents. What are we? What did we decide? We didn't uh, they, decide. I think they a, mom's the a mom is a mom. I say yes. I think up. so too. I think stepmom counts. So so here's the thing: is I mean, obviously you can all draft based on your own. But I mean, many 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 women in movies are moms in the movie. But would they all technically qualify in that case, or do we have? I mean. You could make a really bad pick, I know, but I'm just saying. Like, what, what, what do you mean? What do you Why mean? wouldn't they qualify? Well, because lots of them are moms 
in theory, kind but of like it's incidentally totally incidental exactly. to the movie. Oh, you're saying you're saying do they have like does the mom role have to be specified within their character in the movie? And, and well, it or may, kind of important to it. Important, oh, mean, right? Like so, the, like, would we say that? No, I don't even like. I mean, shit. You can take any. I I no, think you can take any mom, mom you wanted to, as long as they're a mom. Yeah, but exactly. But. Is it going to lose you the draft or not? Right. I mean, yeah. it seems like That's, some part of their motherhood has to be, seems like it has to be important to their their, right. their character, yes. their role. Right. Okay. Yes, I, I agree. So we're picking memorable moms. I had the same question Nate had because when I looked through like a bunch of movies and then I was looking through like a bunch of lists and I was like, it, she was a mom? Like, what the fuck? It was like, uh, I, I none of you guys are going to pick this because she's not a mom, but it was like uh, Ripley from um, yeah, from aliens. aliens. She's on a ton of lists of like best movie moms, and it's like that fucking not her not kid. A stepmom. Exactly, yeah. she's like a she's obviously a single single woman that cares for. The, but anyways, it, I think there. I think I think it's pretty clear what we're looking for here, guys. I oh. think everybody understands the criteria. Broad right? interpretation. I'm good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. If she thinks she's a mother. She's a mother. Okay. Okay, well, if she marries the Just kid's let dad, him, we're let him, it. let him pick, let him pick <laughs> Sigourney. So, Bradley, how do we pick our? Uh, I hope there was like some sort of incantation or or oh, something. Oh well, I uh, mean, be, be before we get to that, let's just real quick uh, recap. Uh, Nick, how many wins do you have? Oh fuck, Trace. I have three as well. Nick, was that a question or a statement? <laughs> Trey? <laughs> <laughs> Nate, Nate, how many wins do you got? Sure, I positive, think I have one. Confident. I think you do have one. Although your points, your, your total points on my like there are no spreadsheet of uh, of shame is also saying that you might not be the, uh, the there best. There are player. no other, there's no other way, way we're measuring this. <laughs> <laughs> I have zero wins. All what's, right. What's so that now that we've got that out of the season. way, we are now, this is draft eight. And uh, we have this little signboard at my house. And like, so... You know, Valentine's Day. Ouija board? It, no, it's just like, it's like you, <laughs> you have the little letters and you can put little messages on it. So, uh, you know, Valentine's Day, I put, you know, I love my wife on that. So, like, when she woke up, she would see that. Like, little, little, little tiny things like that. Now, yesterday I came home and, and after watching this movie, and it still said, I love my wife. I was like, okay, cool. I go to sleep. <laughs> I wake up in the morning. And that fucking shit is rearranged. What did Melissa just, write? It just says... Just four words. It said Zach. Oh. It said Nate. Ugh. Why am I always Brad? Oh my god. It said god. Nick. How okay. does Nick always get the fourth rap? I but, don't always but get the rap. At the do. end, that fucking symbol from Hereditary was at the bottom. <laughs> uh, the Paimon symbol. The Paimon symbol was there uh, too. I was like, shit. But it did say in order Zach, Nate, Brad, Nick. Okay. Ooh, rapping. Well <sighs> I was not prepared to have first pick. I do have the first name on my list, which is literally the first mom that I think of when I think of this. I can't believe you're going to take this. I can't believe this is buying the shirt. So when I went to college, nope, no, I showed not. up. I showed up at college, and uh, I had like I had like a full head of spiky hair. Uh, you know, I looked I looked much different than I look now. And for and and kids started calling me Stifler when I first <laughs> showed up. Do it, you when I first showed up. And then my mom showed up randomly like six months later, and kids were like, Stifler's mom, Stifler's mom. And uh, that's just a funny story that I want to tell about. Uh, is, it, is this about a story that. about how your mom's hot? It's a story about how pe- people were calling my mom Stifler's mom, and my mom is, didn't get the joke and was like, they're asking me like, if what it is, is I'm, happening. I'm in. I'm yeah. <laughs> I will say there's a I, I'm hint, in. I'm all a, in a hint. That. A Don't hint talk about of my mom, Sean Nate. William Scott. <laughs> you have a hint of Sean William Scott going. I I can see where they were. I can see that. Yeah. When, I, when I had hair and Especially sideburns, with the, the gelled, yeah, I had crispy spikes, gelled hair tips. and sideburns. There was an accusation that I looked like Stifler. Okay. And uh, and anyways, <laughs> my first pick is Stifler's mom. I didn't even, from uh, American didn't even think about that, that. Beautiful. It's on my list. That would have been my second pick. That's nice. I was hoping to get that in the fourth. I have no idea. <laughs> Where you guys are going to go with your first picks? I really don't. It is, I, it's, I'm, it's wild. Yeah, my end of my draft is very solid because I know you guys aren't going to pick them, but I just have no fucking clue where you guys are going to go right now. Oh my god, I don't All either. Right. I already forgot the order. Oh man, um, I did too. I think I'm. <laughs> it's Nate. It's yeah, Nate. it's me. It is okay. Nate. Nate I, I, me, I've got Nick's. I, okay, you and Nick are on the reaches. So, well, my my George Costanza strategy did not work out last week. It did not. So I'm going back to uh, <laughs> me just picking shitty right off the bat. <laughs> I'm going to go with my first shitty instinct, and uh, it's going to be Mrs. Gump. 
I, I got it on it. my list. It's. It, I think that's a top pick. Is there a Mr. Gump, Mrs. Mama, Gump? <laughs> Mama said. Mama. She uh, made some sacrifices for her son. Yeah, Mrs. Gump he, was a good mom. She just loved his force of schooling. She did. <laughs> she, she sure did. <laughs> <laughs> no, and she gave him all the good sayings. Like, yeah, I'm always said. I mean, there was super memorable. Said, Life is like a box of chocolates. Beautiful. That was that was very nice. Is there any more any other mama saying that's more repeated? Nope. Mama says. Well, I mean, there's some I mean, things got, I yeah, say. Yeah, it's some yeah. mama jokes that I say. <laughs> All right, with, with my first pick, boy, I'm going this between hard, two here. Man. Jesus. Oh, man, I think I'm going to get one of these on the – yeah, oh, okay. Man. Are you? Yeah, let's do this. Okay, so my first pick here, interestingly enough, she has to basically, like, save the world on multiple occasions. Um, and uh, she's got a lot of responsibilities having the son who's supposed to prevent us from oh, uh, losing it. to the machine. So damn it. Sarah Connor – Oh, Ugh. specifically list, from Terminator dude. Two. Damn, that's a badass mama. She's not even a mom in the first one yet, but she is because her son's from the future. Yep, she kno- she knows it. Wait, does that qualify? Uh, it does. It does. She gets impregnated in the Just movie. Save from Terminator Two. And you're, yeah, oh, I put T two up. Some of the first boobies I ever saw right there in the shadows on uh, Terminator One from <laughs> Bev's Video Kingdom. Sarah Connor. Huh? I got my uh, tonsils out or something like that as a young kid. Rented Terminator. My mom went to work, and I watched it on the couch. And may have rewound a few. Times. I, I will say nice between T one and T two, like just going between Linda Hamilton and, and, and Terminator one, where she's just so helpless and like just trying to like survive, and she's just, and then all of a sudden T two, she's just a just a badass where she's yeah. doing the mm-hmm. fucking pull ups and yeah. she's fucking people up with the sticks and stuff like. Yep. God yep. damn. When she's doing the pull-ups, <laughs> she's so badass. Too. And then when she turns around and just looks at them, they're looking at through the window and she just turns and like gives this like evil look. It's like, God damn, I would not mess with her. What's this muscle right here, Nate? Uh, I believe that would be the your lat. Uh, lat. Dude, her lats in that uh, in that scene where she's doing those pull-ups, savage, bro. Yeah, she's she's ruthless. Good mom. Looks like she got wings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nick B, let's do this. All right, uh, I got to go with number two on my uh, in my green top five area. Um, so this lady just kills a ton of people throughout two movies. <laughs> Quentin's number one woman, uh, The Bride, Kill Bill, Volume 2. Ooh, well, that's one that I don't know that I would have picked up. Because everything she was doing was for her daughter, was well, to get to her daughter. Well, well, I, I, this is on my list, and I was going to pick it next. But I do want to throw a little shade just because it's like she doesn't know she's a mom. A hundred percent. Until the very last scene where she sees her daughter. She thinks her daughter, she thinks she lost her baby. Like as a pregnant woman, she thought she lost the baby. You're always a mom. Yeah, it's I mom guess even if you lose your baby, you're still a mom, but. Fuck. She doesn't know until but that last she scene lose when, her she baby. Sees, when she sees the little girl there at Bill's house. All right. And then um, on the rap, tough, me and maybe Nate's favorite, favorite movie, Ugh, Elaine Miller. It. Dude, come on. Don't come do drugs. On. Almost Why? Famous. Why? Almost Famous. Elaine I did Miller not from Almost think it Famous. I was going to go ahead of me. So I that, told was, that was definitely one of my targets. And I... I yeah. I told the wife, I was like, what about the mom from Almost Famous? She's like, yeah, she's great, but when you think of Almost Famous, do you think of the mom? And I guess I don't really. None of these movies, you really think of the mom first. Eh. Other than definitely, Forrest Gump. Definitely not the two that you picked. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all go. Right. All right, all right. Let's so... <laughs> Now, you know what? It's funny that uh, when we were talking about Mrs. Gump and we were talking about sayings, there's one mama who I think I is exactly a little bit more famous for sayings than uh, old Mrs. Gump. So Bobby Boucher. And that would be <laughs> Mama Boucher. Because <laughs> Mama said, ma, 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 Mama said, Mama said, Mama Boucher from uh, The Waterboy. And, and you know, this might not do well, Justin Chuck, but I don't care because Mama Boucher... <laughs> Isn't it the misery lady? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, Kathy dude. Bates. Man. That's Kathy so good. Bates Great. just yeah. living it up when she like starts Brad. to get her little her little celebration at the end when she's on TV. She starts dancing a little bit, 
<laughs> I didn't even asked, have that on my list, dude. I love that. He asked which part of the snake are we, or which part of the snake are we eating? And she's like, um, I, the snakes don't really have parts, but <laughs> if you, I had to guess, I'd say it's the uh, the neck. The neck. <laughs> Isn't that what it was? I think it's the neck. Yeah. That's a good pick, dude. <laughs> Damn, um, I didn't even think I of like that. A lot of ways Diffles to go. Here. Mom and Waterboy. Not on my list. So I, I this one is one of those where it's I'm not it's not clear to me that her role as the mother is relative to her other relationships is the key. But Definitely she's take this pick. Pretty iconic. And uh her kids change on her a lot. So she keeps track of them even when they become different people, <laughs> which is cool. <laughs> Their relative ages change. It's awesome. I'm taking Ellen Griswold from the vacation movies. Also on my list. What did you call her during the, you called her a uh, puberty accelerator. Oh, did I? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was your description. And, that, and that, 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 was, that was inspired shit right there. <laughs> it was. That was a good one. You don't be, remember that. That huh? needs to be an ad. <laughs> yeah. Ellen doesn't even trip that her kids like switch what they look like or what ages they are. Whether which matter. one's older. Yeah. Doesn't matter. She just still loves her. What does she call Clark? She calls him a uh, Sparky. 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 There you go. Yeah. Sparky. She loves her Sparky. Oh man. Well, th- there's. Yeah, I'm not going to get into my. <laughs> I'm not going to get into how too deep into my depravity for all of you, except to say that <laughs> Beverly D'Angelo is uh, a revelation. Does it for you? We should have got her on the Christmas vacation pod. We really should have. All right, Zachy, you got two in a row. I do. I do. Time to win this draft, baby. Well, here's where I lose it. I'm going to go with. <laughs> When we were talking about most memorable moms, it's one of the first ones that I thought of. And I'm going to go with Jason's mom, Pamela Voorhees, from the first Friday the 13th. And if you guys haven't seen it, Jason's not the killer in the first Friday the 13th. It's Pamela, Jason's mom. This is true. I don't think that's a bad pick. And I think that might do well with yep, our, I think that our judges. Very well. I'm taking a fucking cue from uh, Kung Fu Panda over there, Nate. <laughs> Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> J- was J- was J- Jason Whitehead. Yep. He come, th- come through. Jason Whitehead. That was a shout Kung out to my Fu boy Jason. Panda. Kung Fu Panda. You know, it was, I, <laughs> Damn, if, it wasn't, that's if it wasn't such clever wordplay, I'd be insulted, but I'll take it. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the Kung Fu master of pandering, apparently. And I'm going to come back around and stay in, stay in not the same genre, but a similar genre. And I'm going to go Tony Collette and Hereditary. I'm going to wear the T-shirt to the band because, uh, God damn cool. it, that, that, that's it's my it's, favorite movie. And it's not going to win me the draft, but I said I was going to pick it. So I a, got it. Cool cool that you took the wrong Tony Collette role, but okay. No, there's I several, don't but I don't, think, I, I don't think the other hey, one qualifies. I think this one's legit. And... and I mean, the fact that she did not get even a nomination for an Oscar, that makes me kind of sad. Yeah. Oscars hate horror movies. Yes, Until they, they decided do. that, uh, oh, they were like, oh, uh, Get Out was cool. I guess we'll nominate that. But whatever, Oscars. All right, Nikki B, let's do this. Ruby rap, right? No, is it, it, it me? Was I just rap. So it's oh, you, it's back Brad, to Nate. My bad. Back to me. <laughs> Man, I apologize. That's a lot for me. Uh, <laughs> no. You're like, I'll take the pick if I need to. I mean... <laughs> All right, ah, I don't know which way to go here. I'm not. I'm, 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 you know now, Brad. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna <laughs> pander because there's a pick here that I think would play well. All right, I'm gonna take Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> I thought about that. <laughs> Got to hold it for a long time. an ultimate milf. So is uh, so I haven't seen the graduate in a thousand years. Yes. Is is she a mom? Yeah, yeah. She's like so, his so buddy's the, mom or something. No, the, What's premise, the story? premise is that like she's telling him, you know, to stay away from her college age daughter, and then she swoops in. That's what it is. Her, her daughter, right? Yeah. She's so making it's, money moves, right? And then he's like all into the daughter and try, you know, goes to like he's going to break up the wedding and breaks up the wedding at the end of the daughter. And but in the meantime, good old mommy Mrs. Robinson gets her some. Very solid. Very solid. I don't, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know which way to go next. Hmm. There's a tough, there's a, there's some know. tough picks coming up here because there's so many. You just have to decide how prominent her role as a mother has to be in your pick. Oh, man. There's, uh, I have three, three picks I want to make, but I have two picks left, and this sucks. And I feel like I could get all of them, but I only can make two. So we're going to go first this way. You know, sometimes you just, like, got to reveal yourself to your uh, judges. 
So I'm going to go ahead and take uh, a, a woman who goes by, you know, a few different names. And, and all of them mean that she's a badass. That would be Elastigirl, a.k.a. Helen Parr, a.k.a. Mrs. Incredible from The Incredibles. I mean, she basically single-handedly saves all her husband's <laughs> bullshit. It's called The Incredibles, and Mr. Incredible kind of is the focus, but she fucking solves all the problems. She comes through in the clutch to make sure that her fucking husband doesn't get killed and saves the day. You know, there's there's a lot of talk about unrealistic uh, expectations put on young women, and uh, Elastic Girl's body might be the best uh, body on a cartoon that I've ever seen. She is absolutely <laughs> amazing. Pretty smart. I mean, she, the premise is that her body is literally elastic. She's so. got that slim thick like, thing going on, and just like. she looks great as far as cartoons go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's no Jessica. Didn't we, didn't she's we no talk, Jessica Rabbit. I was like, did oh, we talk bro. about that one time? Like, like animated. Uh, 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 I think the most attractive animated characters. I, I don't. Did yeah, we talk about that? I think we considered that for a draft category, and we just haven't haven't decided to go there yet. We're All gonna right. see a Jessica Rabbit Elastigirl one two real quick. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right, so now we are on to Nick for his final two picks. Okay, I'm ready. I think he's still got green. You're going to pick for hottest cartoon chick. You got Elsa or what? What you got, Nick? Elsa's not a mom. <laughs> Elsa's he mom. He was so man. deep in thought, he missed <laughs> about 10 minutes of conversation. <laughs> it was just pain, just was incensed at the suggestion. Elsa's not a mom, you Elsa's fucking douche. <laughs> idiot. <laughs> You're an fuck. idiot. What an idiot. <laughs> All right. Third pick Brie Larson. As Ma in Room, dude, oh, dude, that's a great pick. She is way to get unbelievable, Oscar dark, winning. Um, really, like I mean, Larson. talk about. I mean, you you can't. I mean, that the role of a mom, what she does for her son, she Ugh. makes believe. She makes a complete make believe world for him, and has the routine, and and the son doesn't know any better because he was yeah. born while in while. In cap while well, captive. Yeah, you don't need to say anymore, bro. I'm already creeped out. Okay, thanks for thanks for bringing so her. Her name is down. just Ma. Ma. Yeah. Okay. Got she it. well, and that's what I that's what IMDb had her as. So Brie Larson. That works. Brie Larson in I'm putting room. Ma in the room. And then I'm gonna finish up with uh, Julia Roberts as Aaron Brockovich. I She's an amazing fucking mom, and her role as a mom is shown nonstop throughout that movie, and she is a badass. Whether it's breastfeeding and reading up on court cases or taking her kid to the babysitter, the fucked up babysitter that, that smells like chicken or, or something like that in between <laughs> interviewing, um, you know, witnesses for uh, this case. So. I love that you picked that. I used to work at a place that was contacted by Erin Brockovich and her team of lawyers because well, okay. they wanted to sue a client of the people that I used to work for. And they wanted to interview us, and we were like, "No, we'll pass." <laughs> did they? Did they win the case? I have no idea. I don't, I don't think that it was ever brought to trial or anything. But she does those class action lawsuits yeah. and uh, and stuff like that. Holy and she, shit! She contacted us, and we were like, "No, we we don't want to be involved in any of this. Please leave us alone." But do you mind just signing? You Please know, stay this, away, Miss <laughs> Roberts. Uh, this a VHS. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, sometimes you got to be the bad guy. And, and and the bad guy doesn't always win, but that doesn't make them any less of a solid mom that's just trying to protect their uh, progeny and you know like to make sure that they uh, that their species survives. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the queen from Aliens. <laughs> The alien Sorry, queen? What? What's that? The alien queen. I mean, she has a whole stare down with with uh, the Ripley. one with the little alien in her mouth. Or is it the little one in her mouth, oh, or is it the, the big one? The, the big queen at the end, where she's, <laughs> she's protecting all her little eggs back there, and, and yeah. Ripley's like fuck with it. Like she's like, oh, you want those, don't you? And like she's like, they have a whole standoff. But that that queen just trying to like I, let things I, survive. Somehow I missed out on the animal kingdom. I should have gone animals, apparently, because we're going. The, I don't know if the queen's an animal. Like I mean, those, those, that was sneaky dope pick because a lot of the lists have. Had Ripley, and that's the correct mom pick it from that. That is the correct mom pick. The the queen is she's a vicious, vicious, Damn. terrible thing. But as all much she's as trying I, to do is, is have her baby survive. As much as I usually shit on your terrible picks, Brad, that, <laughs> was, that was fucking good, dude. I give you mad props this draft. Damn, uh, I liked all your picks. All right, this one's been staring at me, and I'm gonna go with it and hope. This is one that's like if it hits, it's gonna hit. Hard. It's gonna be a steal of the draft, and if if it doesn't hit, they're gonna be like, "Who the fuck are you?" Talking about? 
So this was wow. a movie that I saw, and, and it's not a horror movie. It's not even. It's I might you might call it like a sl- almost like a thriller comedy. Um, and it's a movie that has mom in the title, so you know <laughs> the mom's important. And that's serial mom's Kathleen Turner. What? It's like a weird spoof of a kind of horror thriller comedy type movie. And it's just ridiculous, but she's really funny in it. <laughs> and if they've seen it, but she's also kind of, it's kind of like a little bit creepy and they've seen it. They're going to love it. If they haven't, they're going to be like, yeah, just, you, you just lost. The this goes back to BVK because I, my, my thing as a child that I love to do was to go over to the horror section and look at all like the cassette, like all the, the boxes of the horror hey, movies yeah. with no intention of renting any of them. <laughs> like I just like to like look like at all the different ones and years. see like, oh shit, that looks scary, but I'm not going to watch it. And Serial Mom was distinct because she's like standing there and she has like a butcher knife. A pair of, or is it a pair of scissors? Or I mean, Scissors or something, but I remember, oh, her, I remember her picture on the poster and seeing that and like always like, oh, that looks scary and weird. And like, oh, she's a killer mom. That just is awkward. That's not supposed to be like moms oh, you're are right. supposed moms to be Moms supposed to be like is that. It a, is it it's, like a, a, it's a butcher knife. Oh, so, okay. So there's different posters. Okay. So one of them, she's holding like a pair of scissors, kind of holding it up like this. Okay. I remember one where it's like like more like her and body. This one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is the, the, so the one, the, the second one, like oh, she's, she's got a butcher knife up and holding a pie. Um, sort of like she's going to stab the pie, and then the, the first one though she has like a pair of scissors she's holding up to her chest. Yeah, so something like that. I, I do remember that, but it's like yeah, I remember that box just. And it's ninety. Staring at it me. was a it was a ninety four movie. So well, it's not like you know when I was real young, which is actually kind of surprising. I thought I was thinking it was more like. I thought it was the other, like maybe like nine. You were just a scared huh. sixteen year old dude. Don't worry about it. You know what? I snuggled. <laughs> out. I Fifteen sn- year old. I still didn't want to watch horror movies. I snuggled my gizmo. Oh, wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I told you I watched I watched the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre original with my dad like when I was like ten and I was like okay this is enough <laughs> like, oh really this shit's way too realistic do we have a do we have a character name for serial mom do you know um I will I will I find you that. one and then uh, we've got Zach here wrapping this shit up. this is the last pick yep so man there's so many you guys oh, there's yeah. so there's, many there's a lot to talk about in the I kind of want to go with Stallone's mom and stop her my mom will shoot. But I'm not going to. <laughs> you, you guys see that? <laughs> I remember just I was an old ass lady yeah, holding the gun. Hold the gun. It just looks so stupid. Did you never watch that? Oh, I'm, I'm man. sure I watched it, but I I couldn't tell you a thing. I that thought of that, and when we thought when we said the category, I was like, oh man, that old lady and stop her. My mom will shoot. You're like I'm gonna take that. It's so ridiculous. All right, I'm gonna go with Elaine McFly and Back to the Future. Oh because God! What a good pick I, that I love didn't have on my list when she takes Let, the let's turn. Let's call her Lorraine just to be, oh. make sure we're calling. Her by <laughs> Sorry, <her> actual name. <laughs> I autocorrect, bro. <laughs> but dude, the when she does the turn in the first movie and is like all slutty in the car and like drinking and smoking, and he's like, "Mom, what the fuck?" You know what I mean? And then in it's the classic. in the in the second one when they go to the future and she's Biff's wife and all that, she's got the big fake boobs. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, just yeah. so hilarious. That's, that's a, my that's pick. a really great pick that I did not have on my list. That so, was on my list, and and I it wasn't one of the three I was going to take. The the other one that I had on my list that I was thinking about taking was was Ma Fratelli from The Goonies, which yeah. Oh, she's a, a classic. One. I mean, when she just yeah, slaps really the good. shit out of her her sons constantly, and yeah. kids. She yeah. tries to be nice to Sloth, but she also is just a terrible mom. Yeah. It's yeah, kids suck. <laughs> uh, so what what do you guys got for also rands? I don't have quite as long a list as I, I do got sometimes. Quite, Wendy from The Shining. Oh yeah, yep. that's a good one. That's the last one on my list. Kate from Home Alone. Oh god, that's a good one. How did I f- miss that one? What about Amy Poehler as uh, Regina George's mom in, in Mean Girls? I've got Mrs. George. Fuck, yeah. um, so funny. Another Frances McDormand, right? Because we got we had the, the her um, her she was picked in the for Almost Famous, but Mildred Hayes in Three Billboards. Oh yeah, she's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. An old school one that maybe you guys have seen, but uh, Beatrice Henderson. It's uh, it's uh, Al Brooks's mom and mother. Uh, Debbie Reynolds is Al Brooks's mom, and one of my favorite scenes is like she's over, he's over at her house, he's getting some ice cream out of the fridge, 
And he's like, Mom, how old is this ice cream? And she's like, Oh, no, no, that's just the protective ice. You got to get under the protective ice. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> she's amazing in it. But I mean, it's all about his relationship with his mom. And Al Brooks is, is a genius. So love Al Brooks. Bambi's mom. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's that that's one that that's I a Brad thought Pitt, about yes. jumping in. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alien, the the Queen Alien or Bambi's mom. <laughs> um, I, I was a big fan of the Father of the Bride movies, so Nina Banks is a good one for me, especially in the second one. She's she's a pregnant mom uh, slash grandma. Jodie yeah. Foster in Panic Room. Oh, that's a good one. What about Cher in The Mask? As the mom of in that mask. kid in the mask or mask, oh, mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I think it's called the mask. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I thought the gym carries the mask. That's and also mask. the mask. It's just, it's just mask. It's not. There's no the. It's, it's just, just mask. mask. Yeah. Leanne Tui in uh, the Blind Side. She's, Holly Hunter in Raising yeah, Arizona. I, I, <laughs> all I can oh. ever think about is is Daniel Tosh. He has a whole riff about after watching the blind side he's like he's like anytime i see an athletic athletic looking person black person i just pull up next to him and say what's your 40 time <laughs> get in the car <laughs> he's like is that the, not the message i was supposed to get in that movie <laughs> terrible uh, but i i don't know i i've not seen that movie and i don't know I'm christy not sure how I feel about it christy alley look who's talking oh that's a good one, one of my faves nick um, and I think you said earlier that you thought that uh, uh, going with Tony Collette, you would have gone with Sixth Sense, Lynn Sear. I probably would have, yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty good, mm. pretty great. Morticia, role. the Adams Family movies. There you oh, go. there you go. Didn't uh, even Angelica think of that. Houston is awesome in those. Yeah. What about Patricia Arquette in Boyhood? Mm-hmm. Um, complicated mom character because I, I think like parts of the movie she seems like a great mom, and parts she seems kind of shitty. And I like the transformation. The mom in the Christmas Story. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a solid one. That's on my list. Um a couple others from my list were were uh Rose's mom, Titanic. <laughs> and then uh Dorothy Boyd, Jerry Maguire. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What about uh the bad mom, the the the, the moms and bad moms? Mm-hmm. Which so is, that was one of my wife's picks. Yeah. Like, she which, said which, the drunk which, mom in <laughs> bad moms. Say, yeah, which <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that the Anna Gesteyer is like yeah, the, it's yeah, so I think funny. She's the one that's the, the most drunk. Okay. Um, so the the ultimate pander pick to I think with these judges would have been Padma, Padme. Are they Star Wars people? I think so. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, oh, no, I didn't know they were Star Wars. Hundred yeah. percent. And I almost picked that, and that was well, the what about Leia? Leia would have been. I think Leia. She's might freaking be the, Adam Driver's mom, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, but but I but for me, so those those are interesting because because Padma doesn't have the the baby until the very end of, right, but, of episode but, three. But it's such a major. I mean, she dies at childbirth, which like is such a major like mom moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand that, no, but no. I, I think Molly Weasley better pick Harry Potter. Yeah, I love some Harry Potter. What she say like when she kills a uh, 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 what's her name's character? She's like. Get away from her, bitch. You bitch. Yeah. What about, what about, we talk about it all the time, but what about the mom from A Christmas Story? You missed that. Nick said that just like five minutes. Shut up. No, you didn't. <laughs> Wait. Did you say from A Christmas Story or from Home Alone? He said Home I Alone. Said I'm talking about he A Christmas said Story. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said Christmas said both Story. Of them. Fuck you, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you going to do? So, so jo- <laughs> Joanna from Kramer versus Kramer. Joanna Kramer, Kramer versus Kramer. Um, and I don't know if you guys have seen Easy A uh, with... Um, with, uh, uh, with Emma Stone, um, Emma Stone, but Patricia Clarkson is her mom in that, and and uh, I think it's Stanley Tucci is the dad. It that, is, and and Patricia Clarkson's great as the mom. She's like the coolest, you know, like most understanding mom. And then the one, the the real curveball that I was going to throw was well, so there's, there's two moms in Wedding Crashers, right? There's I, I wanted to pick the the mom, uh, the the Secretary of State's wife. Kitty cat, kitty cat, uh, was a memorable mom, but also a mom we never see or hear. <laughs> Farrell's mom, mom Meatloaf, oh that mom. God. What is she doing? <laughs> what does she do? I don't know what she does, but she's my pick. So that's that solid. My my one just because uh, uh, my family used to hang out with uh, uh, another family that had two daughters, and so we'd end up watching movies over there, and they were in love with the movie called Troop Beverly Hills from their. Oh 90s. yeah, Shelley Long. And Shelley Long is Phyllis yeah. Neffler. She's a badass mom in that movie. Like she's she's a stuck up Beverly Hills wife, and then all of a sudden she kind of gets like she starts to figure shit out and 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 leads this little. Uh, Girl Scout troop. It's oh, I used to watch me uh, some Troop Beverly Hills. R- I've never Craig, even Craig heard Craig T. Nelson. Of that movie. It's, oh, it's, it's a it's a classic a movie. One. Yeah, it's it's movie pretty here. solid. It actually had a bunch of 
Ke- uh, actors that never did. Kelly Martin, she's been in some stuff. Uh, Jenny Lewis is also a musician. Um, she was like one of the stars. So Helen Hunt and is as good as it gets. What about uh, Emma Thompson in Love Actually? She's a mom. I guess Ooh, it's not, but like that's pretty memorable. She's though. great, but I just don't know how like inherently her being a mom is to her role. I mean, my, my list is done. I'm done. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm done good. too. That there's, I mean, but you know, you like you said, like we could go a lot further if we wanted to, but those are the ones that I feel like are major roles. I feel like there's definitely going to be people that are going to be like, "How could you not pick?" I, would you, could, if they do, please post oh, it on yeah. our social so yeah, and no. shame us, yeah. which we always love. We'd love to be shamed. That's that's been happening often, and we really like it when people are just like, just taking something that we said or something that we picked and just being like, Dude, turn it really? around, tell it, call yeah. us names. We're real, you know, we're real masochists. Yeah, hey, we're gonna tease this very softly. But we got some really cool judges that have some really cool stories that they're going to tell us right after this message from our sponsors. Podcast slash TV stars. California has the largest population in the United States and the site of some of the most famous true crime cases in history. But there's more than meets the eye to the crime in California. Join Sean, Jessica, and Charles on the California True Crime Podcast as they cover crime both infamous and overlooked from around our state, while looking at the deeper history that goes beyond beaches and movie stars. All right, we're back. We're ready to get judged. And uh, we've had one repeat judge, I think, on uh, on the BVK pod. Have we had more oh, than one yeah. repeat? Yeah, there he is. No, right no. There. Walter's been on twice. Okay, been, Walter's been on twice, Scotch but he Beck wasn't really the judge. Times. Scotch Beck is the one I'm thinking of. Scotch Beck, uh, if you're listening to this and you're in Vegas right now, we love you, brother. I hope you don't get the COVID in Vegas. They don't buy. <laughs> <laughs> Scott said, Scott texted us. He was getting ready to go to Vegas, and he was like, I already got COVID once, like a month ago. I feel like I'm going to get it again for sure in Vegas. And He's going like, to bet oh. on his own chances to get COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Prop bet. <laughs> so, Brad's, uh, we're going to do uh, another repeat judge, and these guys are so awesome. And I'm going to throw it to Brad because these are his, some of his best friends. And, uh, who we got to judge us today, Brad? Yeah, no, these are some these are some close friends. I was just uh, we were talking off air that uh, they were at my wedding and I was in their wedding. So uh, these are some 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 close folks of mine. But they also have an amazing uh, uh, podcast called California True Crime, uh, which is a an outstanding true crime podcast that focuses on uh, uh, crimes that have taken place over the. <laughs> last 150 years of california history so it's it's there they go they run the gamut from things that happened in the late 1800s to uh up to the present so it's it's a very cool podcast uh jess and chuck i want to thank you guys for coming back and being a, a second time judge here on the bvk podcast hey guys Hi. <laughs> they're all we're happy they're to all waving it. we're on this fucking podcast again <laughs> i think you guys said problem. we were just gonna uh, come get together and watch a movie on over <laughs> over zoom <laughs> no i'm glad to have you guys here but i i did want to uh uh kind of give you guys a little a moment to uh share some some pretty damn cool news like i mean we're we you guys have been a podcasting game for for a few years now and and we're pretty new to this thing but um, we all have kind of aspirations at some point that, you know, like you like, we're doing a podcast, like maybe something will come of this. Like maybe who knows, maybe something would like it get a little bit bigger, but I, you guys got a cool little opportunity coming to you, um, here in the next month. And, uh, could you guys tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. First off, we're not that big cause we don't have a beer named after us. <laughs> so first off, congratulations on that gentlemen. That was, uh, I, I was very fortunate to, to be invited to the, uh, the premier release of the beer. I can say it was delicious. I enjoyed it. Much love Thanks. to Walter and, uh, Ramirez last call. Yeah. At one point during the, oh, yeah. at one point during the night, and I don't know if this is true. I was standing there in my Babs video kingdom t-shirt and uh, and I'm and Chuck and I are in line for for a beer, and I I actually didn't know I was in line. I was just 
And uh, and so I'm sitting there talking to Chuck, and and mid conversation, these two other chicks in BVK shirts come up and start grind, like dancing up on me. <laughs> Not real hard grind, but you know, real fun dancing, bumping up on me and everything. Um, yeah, with with beer in their hand. in their hands. Yeah, and 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 Chuck just looks at me pulls out his phone, starts to video. <laughs> goes, is that what happens when you get one of those shirts? And, I was like, yep. and he's like, well, I'm, uh, I can't, I, I'm he goes, waiting for mine to come he goes, in. He's like, he's, he's like, it's already on really? TikTok. He's already, he, I sent it to Jess. It's already on TikTok. <laughs> Put his phone away. <laughs> now those women may or may not have been, uh, Zach's wife. Just, <laughs> just, you know, Both of them were my wife. Hard to say. It's hard to say. Who it was. It just for the record, it, they were dancing on Nate. Not me. So just, like could not. I I was a fly on the wall. They, 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 they moved on pretty quickly, but you know, it was, I was a, I was a I was a stop on the uh, on the circuit. Wait, you you guys don't have both male and female groupies yet? Like, come on. No, we have one fan. Uh, uh, no joke. Her name's Kim. She's amazing from Sacramento. So we always give a shout out to Kim. She's our she's our literally our first fan. Uh, has been with us uh, almost from like. The first month one of our first subscribers we actually had a chance to, to meet her in person so yeah we love her other than that i'm my mom doesn't even listen to it so, uh... neither does mine so yeah we're in the same boat yeah. but chuck obviously somebody's listening because what happened to you guys recently yeah so this is kind of cool uh it 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 started um october of last year uh, we actually got an email from an uh, independent producer that works from works through Court TV and was asking us if we would we would want to be uh, guest commentators on an episode of a new show that's coming out this year. And after our initial yeah right kind of <laughs> this can this can't be real. And then doing a little bit of research on our end to make sure that the person that was emailing us was actually not a you know, Saudi prince, um, <laughs> found out that, yeah, it was legit. It's a production company out of San Francisco. They work with Court TV doing documentaries. And after a series of emails and, and FaceTime calls and a pretty contentious coin flip, uh, we found out that we were going to, they wanted us to be a commentator on a new show that's starting called... I probably should know the name of the show. Jess's so face just said, I out. have just no like, idea. We, we, we get <laughs> it. Yeah, we, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's it, hosted by Tamron Hall, who's oh, on the damn. Today Show. Okay. And um, but I'm, I don't know. I know. I don't know if the, the title is public yet. Yeah, the, the, the house on 100% public. It's coming out. Um, and the, the show will focus on court, court cases that, that Court TV covered and has covered. And they're going back and talking to, well, journalists police, victims, you know, perpetrators where they can uh, with an eye to covering, uh, you know, California, all 50 states. And so the, the case that we were requested to be was it's, it's actually uh, a case we hadn't heard about. Oh, wow. uh, they, which was kind of cool because it wasn't one of our cases that we've done in the past. We got to talking to them, had an opportunity to actually talk to the writer of the episode and exchange ideas and, and kind of toss stuff back and forth, which was cool. And then they actually gave us access to all of their, their documentation. So we got 70 or 80 hours of court, um, court footage from start to finish. And then in the process of working on that episode, they had another one of their commentators, one of their journalists backed out. They called us again and said, Hey, we have another episode that we're going to film at the exact same time. Would you guys want to comment? commentate on this other episode that was happening in LA. And so uh, Jess is on, uh, will be on, I'll be on first. And then a couple episodes later, Jess is going to actually go over another real famous case from Southern California. Dude, that's so, so cool. freaking cool. And Same it's going to air on real TV and people will be able to watch it. Yeah. Dude. I, that, like, yeah, that's the crazy thing. Um, yeah. I went down to LA for a weekend, spent a couple of days there, uh, you know, the whole nine yards had cameras and, you know, did the makeup. Did you wear makeup, WC. Chuck? Yeah. Like heavy, like, like heavy eyeliner? What, or yeah. Were yeah. You, <laughs> fake I, I, lashes? I, I will say it, it's more of a smoky eye, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, that's, that's what I see. I, I, I totally see that for now. you. Yeah. I see that for you. Uh, this is a bedroom eye. <laughs> I, I will say that it, there was a point when it walked, when the when we, they were leading us up, they filmed in a um, kind of a loft space. That there was a moment through the 
peeling paint and the kind of fluttering on the the lights overhead that we we're pretty sure they were going to kill us and steal our kidneys. But, um, <laughs> uh, You're like, as much research as we did, this still might be a scam. <laughs> we're just not sure yet. Yeah. But it was cool. Um, it was, it was I, like Meg TV is the production company. Um, they are amazing. Uh, absolutely, absolutely really wonderful people. Um, met some new friends. Uh, and then was cool in California true crime fashion. Uh, right after we got done, we went out and grabbed dinner and then hung out and took pictures of the actual murder scenes where we, so we got to do like, not only did we get to do research, it was another opportunity for us to go and get actual, like our own photos of the places that we're reporting on. So dude, cool. that's so cool. Super cool. And, and speaking of LA, I believe that, uh, the third member of your crew is, is he currently, uh, down South at the magical, most magical place on earth? Yeah, Sean, and if you if you listen to our show or or if you tell me you listening know Sean, Sean is a huge Disney file, like um, knows everything there is to know and absolutely loves. So this was the first time that he'd been able to, you know, get to Disneyland in a while. So he's uh, super stoked to be on. But. Super stoked for him. But one of these days, Sean, we're going to get you on here, man. Like we we got to We got to have you on because Sean's a great dude. Very interesting guy. And I've actually promoted his, uh, I think last week or maybe two weeks ago, that he has his uh, History of Malls podcast. So mm -hmm. check that out if you're into the history of the the uh, uh, the greatest American shopping center, the mall. Go ahead and listen to his podcast. He's got some very interesting stories there. It hurts big in New Jersey. This a the huge, the pod itself. Yeah, huge. Just a huge following. <laughs> all those Jersey malls. The real folks. tight knit mall community. Oh, oh, of, oh, Kevin of, Smith and all his homies. A lot of mall a lot people of there. All those mall rats out there. The yeah, rumor is that topical, he will topical. be covering Vintage Fair coming up. Oh, what? Oh, oh, so, local mall. Yeah, there, there might be a little crossover between California True Crime and a History of Malls we'll be covering. Uh, at knowing you, where you guys are from, Vintage Fair was a huge part in most of our childhood. Yeah, Modest Modesto, years. which is near the, the town near where we where we grew up. Yeah, I spent many an hour in, in the old Vintage Fair mall. I used to ride on those... Uh, wooden things that they were made out to look as though they were cows yeah the yep. crazy jungle gym that they had with all yeah. the cows that yeah. was that was oh, kind of wild yeah. and then the tilt they had an arcade the tilt that was oh uh, tilt spent some time in there we used to play uh we used to play ditch in that mall there's <laughs> yeah. just a whole bunch of us and you could go anywhere you wanted inside that uh jc penny slash macy's or whatever the hell it was <laughs> i was trying to explain ditch to my kids the other day and they're like oh. It's just infected. I was like, I don't know what the fuck that means, but okay. Wait, but that was like a slang term they use. That it's apparently that the game is now called infected or some like. Oh, oh, really? I don't know. I don't. I think they okay. just didn't want to hear any more from me, and they just. Said, it was really just. A, <laughs> it was with a word glorified hide and seek that seemed really cool because your parents weren't there, and you were like, ah, oh, we're just being total adults hiding inside of this rack of clothes. <laughs> I still do that from time to time. It doesn't have the same effect when you're forty some year old man. Uh, Chuck, I feel you on that, dude. Whenever I'm in the mall, which is never, and if I am in any public situation, I see somebody that I know that I don't want to talk to, I'm jumping inside of that rack of clothes, right? dude. That is my yeah. first thought. I'm the like, rack of clothes, I mean, I still feel like it makes just such a good fort. I, I, I have a little perfect fort. Yeah. Except when you'd accidentally you just like, get up one of those needles. And you can't talk to the ladies when they walk up to grab something. <laughs> that, apparently that's inappropriate. Playing yeah. peekaboo. <laughs> they may ask you to leave the goshawks. <laughs> Especially the kids section. <laughs> oh, what size does your daughter wear? <laughs> I think the pink one would look nice. Ch Chuck still got his smoky eye on for the shoes. <laughs> staring out of the clothes, right? I, I never took the makeup off. It's been a few months. Oh, it's starting to wear, but. Uh, oh, man. Dude, thank you guys so much for being here. And I am just fucking amped right now because you know what? You guys don't know which teams are which, but one of the teams doesn't have any wins for the entire season. <laughs> one of them doesn't. And it's hard to know which one yeah. is. It's tough to know. I feel bad for that poor fuck. But you know what? <laughs> I'm curious to know what your guys' criteria was for judging us because one of my favorite pastimes on this show is when people tell me that i'm terrible at things that i'm very excited about so <laughs> what do you guys got <laughs> real, real quick beef just can i just take one quick pause before that because i i know we did hereditary and i wanted to get real oh, quick. Yeah. oh uh, yeah you guys are into uh, obviously true crime but also i know uh especially chuck big horror movie fan so 
where does hereditary sit on your kind of level of of what you like in a horror movie and and what are you looking for when you when you watch those types of films yeah this was this was a uh i was actually kind of when we talked there like when you said hey we're going to cover this and we we want you guys on i was kind of excited because uh, of his his movies i i've watched this one and and midsummer and hot take i hated midsummer wow i did not i I did not like it. I know, I know, I know, Zach, because that's, I think that's yours, right? I well, mean, Her- Hereditary is my favorite movie of all time, and I loved Midsummer. I did not like it as much as I liked Hereditary. But I'm curious, I, I, I'm curious why you hated it, but I, you go ahead. No, and I, I like there, the elements that I liked in Hereditary, I, I also liked in Midsummer. I just think it was a long, overdrawn to get to the point. That's his thing. And I, yeah, and I and 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 reading more about him, and then watching Hereditary again, I can I, you know, I was even talking about going back and trying Midsummer again, just just to because I'm a masochist. But I there's elements of it: the cinematography, the the color scheme, um, the music. All of the elements are there. It's just not what I necessarily look for when I'm sitting down to watch a horror movie. Not that it needs to be. You know, I'm not looking for the typical 80 slasher. I just want something that moves at a brisk pace or has a has a um, kind of a, a certain feel. I, I heard, of the two of them, I like Hereditary because I think it moved a little quicker. I liked how it, it played with some of the the preconceived notions and the tropes of a horror movie, um, especially if you hadn't seen it once everything kind of got spoiled. Right. I don't know why I'm like. Because we've all seen the movie at this point. We um, all watched it. We, we, we all watched our viewers it to check it out. Yeah, so we, we can talk spoilers here. So the idea of like when Charlie died, you know, that was that was a that was a to me it was a huge shock, and I thought, oh, okay, now I'm I, I was I'm a little more keyed into it. Um, the ending is real reminiscent of other like you know original Wicker Man. Um, yep. I know one thing we bandied around our house the last couple of days was Rosemary's Baby. There's a lot of elements of Rosemary's Baby. Probably the most influence on this movie I think is Rom- Rosemary's Baby. I think I think Midsummer probably more Wicker Man, but I see I see exactly where you're going with that. Yeah, the the what is, and I don't know what the subgenre is that generally called, but the the folksy kind of horror film or the the folk or pagan horror films. But for me, I, I, I like, you know, I, it's pacing, I think, for me more than anything. I really do. I love horror movies, uh, and I watch just about anything. Um, but I do have to – it's a certain feel and a certain pace. And and Hereditary was one of those that's really on the line. Because there are, there are a few moments, specifically in the middle, it starts to drag a little bit, and I feel like it starts to wander away. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and then – Again, for me, it was, it's not a horror movie, horror movie, I guess. I, and I don't know how to say that, but it it's more of like he wrote a movie about family tragedy and then put a bunch of stuff, up, tried to tweak a little bit of the horror tropes in it. Which is exactly what he did, Chuck. So he wrote the entire movie as this meditation on grief, he called it, which was just a straight movie and then added later all these supernatural elements to it to make it a horror movie. Well, he did. If I'm not mistaken, he did the same thing with Midsummer, right? They wanted to do a, a Swedish slasher movie, and he came in and said, "No, no, no, let's let's rewrite it about a messy breakup." And he had written that. He had written that already. It was it was supposed to be a scary movie, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely not. I, I don't think either of them would be a tr- would be called a traditional horror movie. And I think you're absolutely right with the pacing. I think Hereditary does the perfect slow burn to me, but I could totally see how someone could watch it and think, my God, is something going to happen? You know what I mean? Especially if you see the preview and think, okay, I'm going to watch this scary horror movie or somebody hyped it up to you as like, oh, this is a really scary movie. And then you watch it and you're like an hour and 45 minutes into this two and a half, two hour, five minute movie. And you're like, all right, where's the horror coming? And especially there's, you know, a few of the scenes, like one of the, my standout scenes is when the son right after Charlie is yes. killed and this and, and it's that scene of him in the car looking straight ahead and the tears start coming and he starts to to check and see if she's all right and then he drives away and I thought oh just that extra beat of waiting to to see if something happens and in, in the silence and there's elements in that leading up until the very end that I really really like I think when you when you put them all together though there's a few scenes and I don't like just can talk about more because uh um uh, kind of our point of contention was was the mom and some of the, the choices with the parents and how that was going and i think i think towards the end 
that slow burn. Once they get to the point where it starts to ramp up, there's so much happening and there's so many other elements getting pulled in that I, I kind of lost the thread towards the very, you know, the very ultimate reveal. Totally. Jess, what, what were your thoughts? I mean, I know you're not maybe as big a horror movie fan, but I mean, this one's not your traditional horror movie. So, so how'd you feel about it? Yeah, I'm not a fan at all of horror movie generally. Um, I didn't <laughs> enjoy the movie. Um, I think because <laughs> I just couldn't find a character, you know, when you're watching a movie, you want to root for for someone or care about them and i just couldn't find that in this story i thought it was really pretty and i like the shot i think of the inside of the dollhouse yeah and the shots sure. of the house itself with the real people and outside in utah i think is where it was filmed right yes man. that was really beautiful those shots were gorgeous um but i just had a hard time finding a character or i just really cared about and i think that kind of hurt it for me yeah, no, we, we talked about that a little bit on Tuesday, the, the fact that there's not really anybody you root for. There's not yeah. anybody yeah. like yeah. you're you're wanting to see what happens, but you don't necessarily connect with any any individual in the in the film. My favorite horror movie is Rosemary's Baby, which scared me to death as a kid. And there were a lot of elements in this that are very similar. Yeah. Um this one just didn't scare me quite the same. I don't know if that's because I'm an adult. I was raised Catholic, so anything with, you know, I don't really believe in demons, but I don't mess with it. So, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. Not going yeah. to chance uh, it, huh, Jess? No, no. So, uh, you know, the ending, I don't know. It, yeah. it was an ending. Well, well, my, my suggestion yeah. on Tuesday was that it, it should have ended with Highway to Hell from ACDC. Like, would have been the, the right song to finish the movie with because <laughs> it was all going bad. We talked about too, because so many of the scenes and the elements where it's it, you could kind of cherry like again, like we said, like cherry pick, like yeah, that's I've seen that before in Rosemary's Baby, or I saw that before, you know, uh, in other, you know, pagan horror movies or whatever you want to call it. But we we talked a lot about the idea that there wasn't a lot of connective tissue in between the individual scenes, like like it, there wasn't a good flow, or I there were some issues with where they have this meditation on the family drama and the tragedy. And then, oh, we have, we're going to throw in the, the super natural elements of, you know, creepy Joan that apparently she became best friends with after hanging out with her once. And <laughs> we wanted to, but, I would have liked to see a little bit more of that be earlier. But you liked that movie. You've been talking about it, how much you liked it. Heredity? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it's not. <laughs> I, I I would I watched it and I was excited to watch it again. I, I think the second time you see some more of the, like things in the background and some of those breadcrumbs <laughs> that are left, I just think I would have liked. You know, it's not one that I'll put up in my in my holy pantheon of greatest horror films. But for for his first major directorial debut, it was it was good. You know, I will I will give it that. Like for right out of the gate for and then. To that secret of Charlie's death, I think holding that on and and really keeping that secret as much as they did was well, that was pretty slick. And especially putting her on the posters, and she was really prominent in the trailers. Yeah. And so when you watched it, you're like, okay, you know, is like reminiscent of uh, we were talking about Psycho earlier, where you know they had the the main the main uh, female lead that was really prominent in the trailers and really prominent on the poster, and then she dies in the second act or something. You know what I mean? So it's it's I I, yeah. I think that's cool. I completely agree with that. And I and I um, I am a fan too of people that are not necessarily genre directors taking a stab at a genre. And so I think that's kind of interesting where you have somebody who's new that might not necessarily be, very, you know, he is a horror fan. He understands the tropes. He understands the genre, but he, he, he approached it as, you know, it's not your typical slasher movie or monster film or, or, you know, even possession film. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So God damn it. I want to know if I won the draft. I just, <laughs> I just, I can't stand it right now because, you know, some of us don't have any wins. I'm not going to say who they are. Could be Nick. Could be Nick. So, so I mean, we but, could say. But. <laughs> <laughs> so what'd you guys? Uh, how'd you guys stack this one up? Did, 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 did you guys come up with your each of your own your own list? No, we we did it together. Combo. I mean, okay. What's or, the, what, or it turned out the same, I guess. What's the criteria? Well, it was a pretty wide category. Memorable mom. Um, so we looked at characters. We thought when you think about them, or you think about that movie, you think about them as a mom. It's a huge part of. Yep. You know that memory for you that comes back after you've seen that movie and a huge part of the plot even mm -hmm. agreed so i mean kind of our main 
there's tons of characters, right, where you could say, oh, this happened to be a mom, but it's not really essential yeah. to the story or makes you think of it, right? So I, I, I'm glad that you guys narrowed it that way because that eliminates at least one of the teams. <laughs> <laughs> Shockingly, that's what we found too, actually. Um, <laughs> Oh boy! So I guess we'll we can go. Uh, you want to go? You want to like rip the bandaid off all at once, or you guys, we, uh, or or do we go round by round? What well, what, is, well, what, is what we like to do is we like to start with the, uh, the the team that got the lowest score, and and I'll announce the team, and you guys kind of tell us about your thoughts on it, and then we'll go to the the third place team, second place team, all the way up to the top. We like a slow okay. burn. Yep. So our our last place. Yeah. Or yeah, our last place. Uh, or first loser, however you want to look at it, is Team Four. Wow. Team Four includes uh, Beatrix wow. Kiddo from Kill Bill. It's got hurt on Nikki. Elaine Miller, got almost famous. Bit. Ma from The Room. Shit. And Aaron Brockovich from Aaron Brockovich. Yeah. So tell us now how Bye his bad. first pick killed him. <laughs> okay. okay. So so uh, while I love Beatrix Kiddo, one of my favorite characters in movies, uh, she. It, for us, she wasn't. It it really wasn't uh, her role as a mom that defined her uh, up until the very end. Got it. Do you wanna, do you wanna... The same with almost famous for us. Ooh, really? Oh, really? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, Nick might have saved me because I I was planning on taking Beatrix Kiddo later, and and uh, the uh, fact that he got her before I did, it was like okay. I was planning to take uh, Elaine from uh, Almost Famous. So, I, <laughs> Nick, thank you for just scooping up all those shit the picks. Assist <laughs> machine, bud. Uh, just just machine. jump on that grenade for yep, us. We he's like that Bruno it. Mars song, <laughs> <laughs> jumping on grenades. Uh, we did we did go a little round about Aaron Brockovich, uh, mainly because she's just a shitty mom. Uh, <laughs> in, I, in, the, in the movie, not in real life. Well, Sorry, this is not. Parent, yeah, so you, yeah. That... She, I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying that she, like, so much of the movie is about the court case and not about her being like, ne- as she neglects her kids and trying to reconnect with them and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't like Aaron Brown. We don't see the part. Was, was that what the movie was about? <laughs> Chuck, you let I him know, bro. That one. You I thought, let him know. I thought she was okay. Oh, nice. You're Personally, a from a single mother. No, I have huge <laughs> respect for single mom. But that movie, there's a chunk of that movie where she's neg- like they. I gave points for that it. one. Uh, okay. I took them away. <laughs> <laughs> and we hadn't we hadn't was... seen the room, but we did look it up and watch yeah, some. We did the YouTube assess. That one does seem genuinely like you guys need to see that it. one's it's, dope. It's a that good is movie. a really good movie. Worth watching. Yeah, and we like Brie Larson. So yeah, it's, it's yeah, she's, it's she's heavy. Amazing. It's heavy, but it's good. All right. Okay. So well, our uh, our ne- next runner up, yes, uh, is Team One. Fuck. Team One is oh. Stifler's oh. mom from American Pie, Pamela Voorhees, Friday the Thirteenth, Annie from Hereditary, and Lorraine McFly, Back to the Future. I thought that might be a better man. One. I thought, that I, thought I had a shot there, there, guys. Okay. It, they're really close, honestly. Yeah, there's only like a but point. But Stifler's mom is a great one. Yeah, yeah, that was and, that was a that was one we unanimously agreed in this house is is a is an amazing mom. I, I'm glad you guys said that. I and feel better memorable. about my first pick. Okay, and so Pamela so, Voorhees is one of the absolute best moms. Period. That was that was to me was one of the strongest picks of the entire entire draft. And this is the team you guys picked for third place. I just want to be sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> did I shoot, did uh, I shoot myself in the dick with my hereditary pick? Because I had yeah, to pick it. Uh, gosh dang it. Yeah, we, um, it's, it, it's it. She she suffered from the. Um, she just I, I I felt the movie was not necessarily like she was not really memorable as a mom. There's that one scene when she's confessing to the son about like she never wanted him, and I really oh, love that great. part. Uh, so that's gut wrenching, but I felt like the rest of it, like her being a mom, was kind of it wasn't there wasn't enough of that. And then we had an argument. Yeah, we um, had a full fight. About yeah, so back to the future. Thanks for that in our house. Uh, <laughs> hey, you're welcome. Whether whether Lorraine McFly is actually a mom or not, because it's in the past, <laughs> and if time travel is linear, she's not really a mom. Oh uh, on, 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 Bez, on Bez Video Kingdom, uh, time is a flat circle. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it all it all happens at the same time. I think that's a great pick, but oh, it's still Jess. important to the plot. But 
this fool. So I don't know. <laughs> Man. Oh, okay. All right. This, this fool you married. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> Who's more foolish, huh? Oh, One that married him. That started last night when I mentioned her as a possible and. He just oh, no. yeah, oh wow. She, wow. She came up in our in our in our family draft and uh yeah, I, I crapped all over it. So, like, I slept on the couch last night. Thanks guys. I appreciate it. Do what we can. Oh man. <laughs> so it's between um, Brad oh wait, I'm not gonna say it. You don't know who's next. It's between two of these guys I here. Think they know. They know who it is. All right. Yeah, so so the the I guess uh first runner up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is Team Two? Ah, I knew it. God, <laughs> Team Two includes <laughs> so Mrs. Close. Gump from Forrest Gump, Ellen Griswold from Vacation, Mrs. Robinson from The Graduate, and Mom from Serial Mom. So, had you guys seen Serial Mom? God, uh, yeah. yeah, she actually. Definitely. That was yeah. another fight in our house of who got her on the draft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We love Serial Mom. It so is, you guys it loved is. it? Oh yeah. my god! So that's one hundred percent. Serial Mom is amazing. Huge steal in the fourth round, right? I knew I was. Yeah, gonna get a I cannot too. believe it went that long. Uh, what killed it for us was um, Alan. Well, no, again, Tron. It it it, it was a split yeah, decision good, between yeah. Mrs. Robinson and uh, 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 Gump. Like I, I I argued against Mrs. Robinson because. Uh, while she is a mom, I didn't feel that that was the that was the the focus of the movie. It was that you know it was the older woman aspect. Her being a mom was almost like a secondary. You know, if she if she wasn't if she wasn't um, a mean, mom to that character, it wouldn't have matter. I don't think it would have changed the I movie mean, he, very much. He's, he's banging the mom of the chick that he really yeah. loves. So it's kind of a it's kind of important. I think it's a, <laughs> I think it's a good take. Nothing. nothing. Okay, great. <laughs> no, I hey, second place. There's nothing. There's nothing to be ashamed about with second yeah. place. Uh, Look at Zach. You, like, hey, why don't you shut? Uh, why don't you shut your whore mouth? Over there, bro. And I think I think uh, Mrs. Gump is a good choice. But agreed. Yep. All right. So no, what that they're, leaves they're is all, they're all wrong. No. Mrs. Gump is sacrificing all sorts of things for her son. Mm, yes. <laughs> all right. What that leaves is Team Three, which had Sarah Connor from uh, specifically Terminator Two, Mama Boucher from The Water Boy, Elastic Girl Helen Parr from The Incredibles, and the Queen from Aliens. Chuck. And, and for us, really, the focus was that that all these characters, the fact that they're actually mothers, is integral to the plots of the movie, and it and it carries through all of them, including the alien. Who's that's again, that's that is a dark horse pick. That was awesome. yeah, that was an amazing. Pick. I told Brad during the break. I said you're going to win the draft with that alien pick. I know it. I feel like, and I think that's what pushed him over the top. I feel like this was the ultimate that, Brad pander. No, I don't think it was pandering. I just, I, I love that scene. I mean, when she's stabbed and stare down with Ripley and Ripley's like threatening to like burn all the eggs. Like it's, it's a, a very pivotal moment. And that queen is not happy about the situation. So. I, I will say the Elastigirl pick almost lost it. Um, uh, that is, that was the deciding factor, but just uh, throughout a compelling argument about Elastigirl being a, uh, a mom throughout the entire movie. Thanks a lot. Well, yeah, she yes. she has to take her kids with her to save fucking Mr. Incredible's ass yes. because he's he's a trash person and <laughs> and she has to take yeah, the kids with her. She Mr. Has to, Incredible and Aaron Brockovich are getting a, getting a hose she has, Yeah, she has to watch the kids and rescue his ass all at the same time, which is pretty incredible for a mom. Incredible. incredible, in fact. And and as as we said earlier before the pod started, I didn't even realize until. They mentioned it that I have my incredible shirt on. I have my Mr. Incredible shirt. That's weird. <laughs> oh, so weird. So I legitimately it's almost didn't like you think s- about it when I made the pick. It's I almost had like forgot you s- I had this shirt on. Secretly sent him a signal of which team you were, and you were like, I'm pick saying. me for the winner. <laughs> you guys, you guys haven't figured out the ways to like, you know, sweeten the pot when you're, oh when you're doing this gosh. draft. Oh my gosh. I got to have more of my friends on as judges, is what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I think it was the horror pick that uh, that sealed it for that. I, that was an eat for having listened, knowing that Zach's the the horror aficionado of the group, the Pamela Voorhees one. That that on it was that was a, was that was obvious. a tough one not to. Yeah, yeah, you could. Sarah Connor's a good pick too. Yeah, yeah. she's especially especially like later Sarah Connor. Yeah, the T two version is where she's just man. We were talking about the doing the the, the pull ups in like the the mental facility, and when she turns around, like stares at him, is all looking through her, like just how vicious she looks, like. She wants nothing more than get out there to go protect her son. Like that's that's her whole mo is get out and protect her son. Well, thanks guys. She's only one of the. Uh, she's actually one of the better things about the newest 
Terminator. Her that character still comes through in that one. If no. you've seen the new one, I don't think I've. Seen I have it. Is it uh, is that Salvation? No, no, no. It's uh. There's been Genesis. Genesis. Is it Genesis or no Dark? I'm, I'm no, pretty I far behind. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, it's it, robots it, killing each other. It's yeah. pretty awesome. But the last one has. Old Sarah Connor. Okay. Oh, okay. Terminator dystopian future. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So I, I we're I, we're supposed to do we're going to do some sort of collab, right? Is that is that the word? That yes. We're do some. We, yeah. we got to get together, right? Yes. You'll be coming on our show while we talk about. Uh, we just had an episode where they made a movie called Rivers Edge, but kind oh. of loosely based on the crime in Milpitas, California. And Sean is going to host that if you guys are. We are in. Oh, 100% you on. love to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thousand percent. Uh, Keanu Reeves, correct? Like Keanu Reeves and. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, that's... Ioni Sky, Keanu Reeves, and uh, one of Sean's favorite people on the planet, Crispin Glover. Crispin Glover. Oh, oh my man. goodness. One of the strangest, <laughs> strangest persons you could ever, it seems to me. Like, like that guy seems like he's just a wackadoodle. Starred in the third place team's yeah. movie, Back to the Future. <laughs> Which they yeah, didn't right, let. There you go. But <laughs> was crazy enough that they did not allow him to be in Back to the Future 2 or 3. Like They, they were, were like, like, sorry, Crispin. <laughs> we cannot bring you back, brother. Like, they did not like him. Uh, almost he's, almost he's, kicked David Letterman in the face one time. He's on a bona fide weirdo. Show. Yeah. He's a wild person. All right. Well. Well, we're in. We're we're excited. We can't wait to, you know, Cali True Crime, man. We're 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 all. I'm all. I'm all in on it all the time. So and dude, congratulations yeah. to you guys on all the uh, all the cool recognition and success that you guys are having. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, you guys yeah. are like our pod idols. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. We've got a <laughs> beer, but you it. fuckers are on TV. Like, yeah. dude, that's so <laughs> sick. Yeah, that you that win. that completely is like <laughs> next win. level. Next level. But they stuff haven't like they haven't aired the episodes yet. They may cut them together and realize <laughs> we're not putting these people on TV at all. Well, that's smart. Right. That's, that's smoke, smoke, yeah. yeah. Just a little too smoky. (laughs) (laughs) Who's the weirdo with a cat eye? Why do you hate Aaron Brockovich? Yeah, they're gonna find out I hate Aaron Brockovich and cancel me. Thank you guys. The movie, so much. not the actual person. I find the the actual person, you know, uplifting, and she did a lot of good it's for us. Oh, so, so you <laughs> hate you hate Julia Roberts? Okay, all right, I got it. I get it. <laughs> All right. Well, so thank you so much, yeah, guys. Thank you, guys. Can't wait. Thank to hang you, guys. Out. Can't wait to hang out sometime soon. And uh, much love to your podcast. The new season just dropped. You guys just had your uh, last episode, uh, or your first episode. Of the new season. What was that about? Uh, a murder of a fourteen-year-old in Milpitas um, by a sixteen-year-old who, uh, over a course of a couple of days, put her body in a ravine and took several students from the school out to see it. Oh my god! Oh, crap. So it's a it's a pretty terrible crime and. Yeah, so if true crime just, is your just thing, light, just some light listening. Yeah. What? <laughs> if true crime is your thing, trust me, it's not. It's not gratuitous. They don't glorify anything. What what Jess and Chuck do is is really just break down the facts. They talk about the situations and they talk about the trials. They talk about everything associated with the the crime itself. And and it's not glorified. It's not trying to uh, do anything other than. These are some interesting tales of of some bad things that have happened. So it's super compelling. I just finished the one. Like I'm pretty sure it was multi part about the the woman that got killed in uh, in Carmel. Very cool, very cool oh, stuff. Yeah. yeah. So if if you guys like the true crime genre, go yeah, check out Cali True yeah, Crime. You got to do it. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. All right, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you guys and congratulations on everything. Uh, we love, we are BVK fans. Uh, it's <laughs> regular it. on ours. I uh, appreciate yeah, your support. You. I really do. Thanks to you. We've had uh, numerous discussions. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Books, you can't see it on the podcast at <laughs> our house. Stay off, that, stay off that couch, brother. <laughs> hey, Chuck, next time, <laughs> next time you want to fight with your wife, you let us know and we'll throw a draft category out to you. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Night, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. See ya. Dude, so fucking cool. Jess and Chuck, they're just awesome. I can't believe I, I was just talk, we were just talking off the air about how cool it is to like just get hit up by somebody and think that it's a scam. Yeah. And then it ends like the people are like, oh, if it's too good to be true, but then like when it ends up being real and they're just gonna be on TV, how fucking cool is that? Yeah, they're awesome. I mean, they they do so much work. Like in that podcast is like that's a and, yeah, we, as we, thorough we, as you can expect. Yes. Or like the respect that they give the topics and everything, it's unbelievable how much work they put into it, and it shows in the pod. 
as much non-research as we do, and people call us out on the socials, and they're like, how did you not research this? And it's That's, like, oh, sorry. All you had to do is like go on IMDb and search that, and it would have been right there. There's nobody <laughs> There's nobody that's going to listen to the Cali True Crime and be like, oh, these guys didn't really yeah. do their research. But anyways, so thank you so much, Jess and Chuck. Go listen to Cali True Crime. Fuck. God I damn it. Just keep losing drafts, and I keep... Oh. stupidly being confident in my picks and uh you know i'm gonna have to make some sort of uh real soul searching uh attempts coming up well, here, i've never been beyond four four was what i got last uh in the preseason in the preseason on the ones that don't count yeah so so, so yeah, this is your so first time to four this is my first Good time job. to four I'm, I'm excited to move forward and and then see where this goes from here because you know well, it's a two horse race, you know, really. Yeah. So let's. Um, let's two just, horse let's race keep. is what he said. <laughs> two horse. <laughs> just keep doing what I we're doing. I thought you about the race between zero and one over here. Like, <laughs> that's a, that's, that's just, a pretty close race. It's a darling. It's a cute little. Nate and race. I are dick and dick to the very end of Nate, the race. Nate tripped over the here. first hurdle and landed on his head. <laughs> and Zach just like asleep at the, at the, at the starting line. I he's haven't even like, started <laughs> the race yet. <laughs> he's like waking up. Like, he wait, wait, he's what? chasing butterflies the other direction. So can we go back to your, you know, more general? point scoring system here how did my second place uh help us? oh so we're back to the general point well, oh, okay we're, we want to hear about it back oh, to the i mean whip. i i gotta crunch some numbers i gotta do some addition yeah. and some division that's gonna well, take me a little why don't bit. you work that out and uh, get back to us you act like i know how to use uh spreadsheets or something weekly average <laughs> is what we're looking for i i legit like actually played around with a spreadsheet a couple days ago trying to figure out and i was like fuck i can't figure this shit out i mean brad i'm gonna need a pareto chart that shows uh, exactly where Nate and I uh, meet in the middle. Okay, so <laughs> it's late. We're going to uh, leave you guys with a little bit of a teaser because this week we did my favorite movie of all time, and I am pretty sure that next week we are going to delve into another person at the table's favorite movie of all time. Mr. Nate, where are we going? So next week is the four, the, the release of the 49th and 50th episodes <gasps> of Bez Video. What? Kingdom. That's We're already there. Bizarre. Well, get out of next here. Week, Dude, it, yeah, isn't that like wild. your age? How old are you? Yeah, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm 150. <laughs> so. Um, so we're going to do 49 and 50. And yep. for the number 49, we're going to cover my all-time favorite movie. And this is... This one's locked in. It'll be surprising if I'm on my deathbed and I say anything other than this movie is my Dude. favorite. Dude. So he's locking it in. He's basically locking it in, like, no matter what he sees in the next It's 50, just hard for you to imagine. So Shawshank Redemption. Ooh. Yeah. On, yeah. on Tuesday. Let's go. And then uh, what, this is a movie, right? We're talking about as a film. Yeah, yeah, some of us at the table have seen it. Some of us have refused, like uh, have had the DVD uh, borrowed and on their shelf for five years. And never angry, watched it. five years. So. Angry toddlers that are like, "No, I won't do it." You think it's good? <laughs> Fuck you! I will say the worst Mall thing rats. ever. The worst thing ever is when Nate asked for the DVD back, and I was like, "Fuck." <laughs> <laughs> I really felt like an asshole at that point. I was like, yes, God, I legitimately have not watched this thing, and it sat and collected dust for like three years or whatever I had it for. And he's like, I, I need that DVD back. <laughs> Brad, I'm noticing a pattern. Someone else, Jess and Chuck, <laughs> bought you Shaun of the Dead, one of your favorite movies of all time, and told you, hey, this movie's super great. And you were like, yeah, cool. I'm going to oh, throw it on the man. shelf for about eight years. I, I Instead know. of Garage Sale, I'm just going to, all the ones I don't want anymore, I'm just going to get, hey, I got this badass <laughs> movie. You want to check it out? Give it to Brad and you'll never see it, it again. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I <laughs> I, guys, I'm realizing, That's like, you know, is. sometimes you get on a podcast, it's more like therapy where you start to, like, learn shit about yourself. I'm like, God, man. There's, uh, there's a part of my personality that I'm, I'm a little ashamed of. So uh, well, that's you know, why we but, did but, it. Maybe go explore that a little bit and come back. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, so next week, um, there's going to be a big. Uh, uh, you so know. this is going to be a come to a come to Shawshank moment for you yeah. because you're going to watch Shawshank Redemption. And, and uh, as much as reaction. this is like such a huge movie in pop culture stuff, I will say that like I legitimately maybe I've heard names and themes and stuff, but as far as like what actually happens in this movie, I have no fucking clue. Do you want to go jail. into it as blind as you can? I know you it's should. Jail. I know people are going to jail. I yeah. know what they're going to it's jail prison. for. Prison. 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 Yeah. And, and so it's a prison called I'm Shawshank. sure there's going to be some bad stuff, but. 
So, um, so, so we're going to do that. And we've got a special guest on that Zach has lined up for us and he's going to be, is he, he, I think he's going to be our guest on the Shawshank pod and our draft judge for the Thursday episode. He, he's going to come on and do anything we want him to do. He's excited to do it. Uh, he's a buddy of mine, Mike, that, uh, has had an insane life that may or may not parallel with some of the stuff going on in Shawshank. And uh, I think he's going to have some real insight into kind of a modern day, like uh, what 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 what's the time period on Shawshank? What are we talking about? Like 1960s? 1700s? I think it's like the 40s, 50s, 60s. Is it 40s? Okay, so 1740. So yeah, so so obviously my dude, my dude can't speak on the 40s, but he's he's going to talk about some some modern day issues and some stuff that's some stuff that's going on. He's got a really good insight into uh, the prison system and a lot of that stuff. So. Uh, my boy Prison Mike, he's going to come on, and uh, I'm really excited to talk to him about it. I think you guys are going to love him, so it's going to be super interesting. And then we're going to draft most memorable prison or jail scene in the movie. So we're going with the scene. Yeah, so I think we're not going to drift the whole movie. We're just going to pick a particular prison or jail scene. And that's okay. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You guys seen American History X? Um, have you seen American yep, Me? Have. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> You guys uh, seen uh, Half Baked? <laughs> <laughs> Some good ones out there. Uh, All right, oh, so that's boy. it. We're we're coming. Hey, Bez fans, thanks for helping us make it to fifty. Uh, we uh, we're getting there next week and uh, onward and upward. So uh, it was been a good one. And uh, and you guys are obviously uh, out there telling people about the pod because we're seeing a steady spike in listeners and uh, continue to do that shit. We yeah. still need your help. We are the little pod that could. <laughs> And uh, we've got our own beer, we've got our own t-shirts, and we want your neighbors, friends, cousins, brothers, girlfriends, sisters to listen to our podcast. So send out a group text, say, hey guys, you like movies? Listen to this pod. Chances are half the people won't listen to it, but if a couple of them do, we will appreciate you. And speaking of that beer, if you get over to Last Call this weekend, I mean, you're looking for something to do, Last Call has 16 great beers on tap. BBK is probably not going to be on tap anymore, but they do have cases of it. And if you want to get a can and uh, uh, pour that into, a, they'll pour that into a glass for you right there in the tap room, and you can drink it there. That is something that can happen. Or you can take just you know a bunch of four packs home with you. I like that. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching my scary movie with me. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, I I, I enjoyed it it's more than I week. thought it would. Rough week. I liked watching it with you guys. Thank you, Brad. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. We'll have to wait until the next uh, semi scary one to watch it all together, so we can all hold hands and uh, say the pie man chant. But uh, <laughs> we, I appreciate we, you guys. We kind of forgot to mention that you know our, our boy Scotch Beck did get to watch it with us. But uh, Scotch, do you love that? Do you love that movie? That scary movie. Oh uh, yeah. Do you Scott love Pyman, Scott? <laughs> Scott was are, like, you, are you a big fan of Pyman? Oh uh, yeah. Hey, Scott, come on, dude. Scott Scott was like Scott was like, I, I'm bummed I'm not gonna be able to watch the movie with you guys, but I'm definitely gonna watch it by myself at some point. So we'll get a we'll get a rapid reaction from oh Scott from somebody that watches it by himself in the dark in the middle of an orchard in the middle of nowhere. So can't wait to ask him about that. Thank you guys so much. Bye-bye.